Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin. And do you want to change the grading system? All right, that's gonna be our topic today. But before we get there, I just wanna say thanks for watching. And also, if you enjoy the content that we create here, please consider just hitting the like button and leaving comments and things like that. That is a fast, fun, free way to share your coin collecting hobby uh, and your appreciation for the content we create here. Also, we do have memberships. If you wanna look into that at all, there's a little link and icon at the end. Uh, but but I do want to say that we all here at uh, the Coin Geek appreciate uh, the fact that you guys take the time to watch and comment and uh, on with the show. So uh, regular contributor Bill says um, a few things here in response to my comments on several videos. I've made the comment that I think that we should do split grading on coins. I think that it's more accurate. I like the fact that um, there are different types of information that's been put out on uh, ancient coins, the way that those are graded, and also uh, earliest or some of the earliest photo cert uh, grading that came from Annex uh, from the ANA actually did split grading, where the obverse and the reverse, the front and the back of the coin, actually had separate grades. So currently, when you grade a coin, uh, what happens usually is whatever the lower graded side is that's the grade of the coin. In other words, on almost any coin, not both sides of the coin have an identical grade. So this applies very much so for mint state coins. So traditionally, you're not gonna have coins with very different grades in the circulated grade range, but in the uncirculated grade range where we're trying to determine is it an MS-63, a 64, a 65, this is where you start to see pretty wide examples sometimes of a coin having a grade on one side or on the other side. So what I do is when I look at something, I say, I like this idea, let's do it. Right? It's a good idea because I like it, right? So then I get people who have some common sense right into me and say, okay, let's consider some things. First of all, um, as you mentioned, uh, it would drive the third party grading companies absolutely bonkers because of all the slabs currently on the market and trying to figure out where a new system would fit into the scheme of things. So the first comment here is, if you completely change the grading standards, um, I don't know that we're really changing the grading standards per se, but if you if you changed how things are graded in the marketplace, what about the millions of coins that have already been graded? Well, I don't think it would drive the third party grading companies bonkers because not only are they busy, they'd be a lot more busy because anyone who has a coin that has a flat MS-63 grade, but one side of the coin is stunning, and that can be considered upgraded from a 63 to a 65 split grade, 63 one side, 65 the other. They would consider that to be an upgrade. They would consider sending it in to get it graded again. The grading companies, of course, would probably be in business a little bit longer, which I know some of you don't like that. Hey, the third party grading services, they're here to stay as far as I can tell. And um, I'm just talking about something that I enjoy about, about coins, the fact that one side of the coin can look very different from the others. Um, I will say where it would drive people bonkers is with the gray sheet or with the price guides. The gray sheet's a, a price guide that you can subscribe to. So the price guides would have difficulty with this, which is actually one of the things that I like about it. And this is the sadistic side of me coming out. But, but really, this is one of the things that I enjoy about lots of different areas of the market where you can't just look up gray sheet. You know, some of the world coin markets, some of the ancient coin markets, some metals, some tokens. It's a little bit more of I'm the buyer or I'm the seller and you are the buyer, whichever way it goes. And we both appreciate the coin for what it is and we decide the price, right? I, I have generally a negative viewpoint of what I call the commodification of coin collecting making it just, hey, let's go to Costco and pick up some MS-65 Morgans on the way home, shall we? Oh, okay. Um, you know, that type of thing. Uh, that that Generally, I don't like that mindset when it comes to coin collecting. Uh, I prefer to be the hobby side where people really enjoy. Uh, in, I think there's more enjoyment when there's a level of understanding between the buyer and the seller as to the appreciation for the coin in the in its current state of being, right? And so, that is something that uh, is just one of these weird concepts that I have kicking around in my head. 
Two, I'm also fearful that collectors and dealers would be very tempted to emphasize the usually higher reverse grade to their advantage in grading pricing the coin, conveniently forgetting that the obverse, the money side, probably accounts for 90% of the grade as it is the first side that one looks at from their grading opinion. As I tell my grading students, you have to buy both sides of the coin. This is great. You actually, you do, and, and I'll add to that, Bill, that you have to buy all three sides of the coin, right? Bill's always telling me to remember to look at the third side of the coin. Uh, and, and of course, people will emphasize the higher graded side, right? But if, if you have a coin that's that has a split grade that's pretty dramatically different from one side to the other, say one side's a 63 and one side's a 66, uh, then, you know, you're going to emphasize that 66 side. Right. So his his comments are fair. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm the one who just said that, you know, I want people to really appreciate the coins for what they are. And I don't like the commodification. And at the same time, I'm saying that third party grading is with us to stay. And you're going to have coins uh, that are graded. And people really get emphasized the grading. Right. And they're, they're going to emphasize that. Uh, I, I maybe maybe this is more of a finger in the eye to the grading uh, to the uh, to the pricing companies than it is to the grading companies, right? Um, where it's a little bit sneakier, and in we see this already in the in the toning market, right? We already see in the toning market where things get bought based on what it is visually. And in my mind, if you have something that's, you know, you're calling a coin a 63 and it's just being traded as a 63, even though one side is clearly stunning, um, maybe, the, maybe the seller can get a little bit extra for this coin. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, to me, it's a disservice to the coin itself when you're calling it a 63 when one side is clearly stunning, right? In, in the toning market, it's easier because visually, you can look at a coin and you can see the toning and make a determination for yourself what value you would put on it. Whereas with a coin where it's it's not really based on the toning, when it's looking just like it's being based on the overall net grade of the coin, you know, somehow I feel like these coins are being slighted, uh, right? Um, yeah, people will take advantage of this. People take advantage of everything. Bill goes on, I can see a certain instance where a legitimate high-end MS-63 plus coin with a knockout MS-66 side or better reverse might warrant a final MS-64 grade, but one with a two, one or two grade higher reverse should be graded from the obverse in my opinion. Now this gets back to what I was saying at the beginning, which is traditionally the coin is graded based on the lower grade side of the coin. So if you have a coin that's a 63 on one side and a 66 on the other side, the technical way of grading that coin should be to call that coin a 63. And, and this is this is where we start to have the kind of philosophical discussion about whether that is. Because here he is saying, well, maybe we could just bump up the grade of the coin to a 64. It's a type of what we would call net grading, right? Which is to say, you are, you are warranting the coin at a higher grade because the overall value or quality of the coin is higher than just a 63. And I've talked about this in some of my grading videos also, where you'll see a coin that looks like a 65, but it has some slight hairlines, and instead they call it a 63. But they didn't say that the coin was cleaned, right? This is traditional net grading, as opposed to where they where they just go ahead and say cleaned or scratches or something, when the reality is they could they can net grade the coin. So he's arguing for that, that we could just net grade the coins. If it's really stunning on one side, it should it should get maybe that extra one point. Uh, at the end of the day, here's one more thought. Maybe the current mint state plus grade could be utilized for coins with a much nicer reverse. I think this would make good sense and accomplish what the market would accept. Uh, I like the fact that he says what the market would accept. Of course, when I philosophize about these things, um, I'm, not, I'm not caring about what the market would accept. I'm like, what will the coin geek accept? That's, I'm just thinking to myself here, right? So um, it, it's a fair statement. So I think about what I think would be a fair treatment of the coins and let the market be damned, right? Let the market, I don't care about the market in my theory, right? So what's nice about this 
email from Bill is that he's actually sitting down and saying, okay, let's think through this a little bit, what'll happen in the actual marketplace. How will this be received by everybody else? And I'm just saying, I like this idea, let's do it. Um, so he's put it in my place a little bit, which I appreciate. Um, so the question here is he put the MS, the plus mark, there's also a star mark that um, NGC uses for a couple different things. Um, I, I don't know that I like the idea of a plus sign per se, uh, I, I, I kind of like the idea of the star a little bit more. Um, but this is where CAC is being used, right? I mean, it, doesn't NGC and PCGS just want to use their own form of CAC here, right? And say, look, we've got um, we've got a coin here that clearly one side's only 63, but the other side's nicer. Should we put a star on it? Should we put a plus on it? You know, how do we handle these types of coins? Or is everything always in eternity going to be neck rated to whatever the ugliest side of the coin is, right? Which is, you know, kind of a harsh way of saying it, but the reality is that's what we're doing. We're just saying, hey, this coin is uh, a 63, even though one side is much nicer. So at the end of the day, I am I am not, uh, you know, you guys can all just comment what you think. I mean, you know, there's, there's the idea of just the idea, which is, hey, this coin this one side's this grade, one side's that grade. That that's the basic idea I'm working with. And then there is okay, but what is what are this going to look like in ten years, right? I laughed at CAC, which is basically if you guys don't know, it's where where they take a coin that's already been graded by PCGS or NGC, and this is another company, and they put their sticker on it if they approve of the grade. I laughed at CAC because I thought. You know what are you doing? These coins have already been graded, right? And here, whatever, ten years later, all of a sudden, especially in the last two or three years, it is creating a different market. And whether I like it or not, the market is moving that direction, right? So there's different things at play here. There are things that someone create and you don't like, but the, what is the market going to do? So if you actually had split grading, what would the market actually do with that? I tend to think that it just creates a little bit more biodiversity, shall we say, in the marketplace. So you'll see a lot of things much differently than you would have otherwise. But uh, hey, they've, they're already adding columns to the gray sheet for CAC, and you know I'm I'm arguing that that I want coins treated for what the coin is. All right, guys, leave your comments down below. What do you think about split grading and uh, Bill's comments? And uh, let me know. Thanks for watching.